So what are the pros and cons of overclocking your GPU? Let's find out. Yo, what is going on guys? It is AJ Bantz here. Welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you are new around here. In today's video, we'll be going over the pros and cons of overclocking your GPU and also covering a common misconception. Before we get into all of that, you may be asking yourself, what even is overclocking or more specifically, what is overclocking your GPU since that is what we're talking about today. So to put things as simply as possible, the manufacturer sets a limit on a GPU Overclocking allows you to go above that limit, forcing your GPU to perform more actions per second and effectively increasing the overall performance of your PC. Now you may be thinking to yourself, hmm, if that's the case, then why don't manufacturers just ship the graphics card with a pre-installed overclock? Actually, a lot of them do, but the reason why the vast majority of graphics cards that are purchased haven't got pre-installed overclocks is because that is where stability issues come into play. Now just to quickly smash that misconception we spoke about earlier, contrary to what you might have heard, those stability issues do not involve your GPU catching fire, overheating and exploding. And now we've got all of that out of the way, we can get into the pros and cons of things and yeah, there's only really one pro. But don't leave the video just yet because that one pro could greatly outweigh the uh, list of cons. I'm, not, I'm really not setting this word, am I? And that one pro that I'm talking about is greater performance overall on your PC. More importantly, great performance when you're playing games, sometimes very significantly. Now the results you're going to get from an overclock depends on the GPU you currently have in your PC. Now of course the lower end GPUs will have less increase in power and the higher end GPUs will have more because they're just built to handle more. But nevertheless you will still get an increase in power and before anyone asks no I would not consider overclocking a laptop. But that is just me and the reason why I say that is because laptops haven't got the same cooling capabilities as an actual PC. Laptops are notoriously known for overheating and eventually breaking and overclocking your GPU on a laptop is only going to increase the risk of overheating. So do so at your own risk. You can actually do it physically, but I wouldn't recommend it. But what do I know? So yeah, overclocking your GPU, you definitely will get increased performance. I tend to overclock my GPU mostly when I'm playing big games like Warzone, just because the FPS really does matter in games like that. And now, time to speak about the cons. Oh, sorry. And now, it's time to speak about the cons. Now, just like everything in life, you're going to have a trade-off. There is a few cons that come with overclocking your GPU. One of them being is increased temperatures of your computer. Now, the reason why this is going to happen is because your GPU is going to be running a lot higher than it normally does, in turn, causing your PC to have a higher temperature limits. Now, there is a way to pretty simply counter this, and that is by getting more fans installed in your PC. As you can see, I've got quite a few fans in my PC. When I got my PC made, I had four fans built into it, but I did buy an additional three fans and fit those ones in myself just to keep my PC as cool as possible, especially because I knew I'll be overclocking in the future. Having additional fans in your PC is always the go-to method. Another con is that if you're overclocking your GPU past a certain limit, you're going to have to increase your voltage, which in turn is going to decrease the lifespan of your GPU in the long term. Now, I'm not 100% how long it decreases the lifespan of your GPU by, but I know it definitely does, especially if you have to increase your voltage. And I have had to increase the voltage of my GPU. I haven't had any issues yet, but like I said, the effects normally happen after a long, long period of time. That is when you'll realize that your GPU just isn't lasting as long as it would have without an overclock. Now, should you let this deter you? Well, that completely depends on you. If you can afford to take the L maybe a few years down the line and buy a new GPU or buy the same one again, uh, then that is completely up to you. If not, then maybe steer clear of overclocking your GPU if it's something you're trying to hang on to for a really long time um, because you can't afford to get a new one or you just don't want to get a new one, uh, then of course overclocking is just not going to be for you. However, I would like to say if you are really careful with it and you just increase your clock speed by a little bit, by not too much in little increments to see how far you can push it before you start seeing uh, black screens and crashes, then maybe you'll be alright in the long term. However, don't take my complete advice on this. That is pretty much just what I think because everyone's PC is different. And that leads us on to our next con. Everyone's PC is different. We don't all have the same components in our PCs. Just because we might have the same GPUs does not mean we have all the same components. So just because one person can overclock their GPU to a certain limit, even if it's the same as yours, does not mean you can do the exact same. As you know, PCs are comprised of a number of different components and doing one thing to your GPU does not mean that someone else can do the exact same thing to their GPU. There is guidelines that you can kind of follow, but ultimately it's down to you to find the right overclock that works for you. And by the way, just going back to a point I made earlier about overclocked factory GPUs, a lot of them aren't even overclocked by that much. So sometimes you might actually be better off just buying the standard version of that GPU and overclocking it yourself if you want more performance increase. Um, but you could just buy the overclock from the factory 
you will have less risk than overclocking it yourself, but you will also have less performance uh, than you would if you were to overclock it yourself. So that decision is also up to you. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you did find it helpful. If you did, then don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on bell notifications. And also, if you're watching this at the time of upload, I'll be streaming over at Twitch tonight, 9.30 UK time. Come and drop in. It'll be great to see you guys there. But again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.